Hello everybody, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Rachel here from Makers Gonna Learn, your amazing exclusive die cutting community. If you have a die cutting um, machine, like a Brother Scan and Cut, a Silhouette Cameo, a Cricut Maker, anything that uses SVG and PNG cut files, you can use with their exclusive membership. We have over a thousand uh, cut files for you to enjoy as well as almost 200 fonts, free printable guides, an awesome exclusive Facebook group, and so, so much more. So if you have invested in a machine, please help us invest in you and your die cutting journey. Click the link down below and check out the membership. But guys, today I'm super, super excited, okay? We're gonna be sharing with you a huge master list of all of our most favorite Cricut hacks that will blow your mind, okay? So these are Cricut hacks that you are gonna wanna use today, okay? You might have seen some other videos of our Cricut hacks, but this is the master, okay? This is gonna incorporate every single one of them. This is gonna be your one-stop shop video for Cricut hacks, okay? I am so excited to share these with you. So if you're as excited as I am, let's jump into it. Okay, guys, we're gonna be jumping all over the place, getting down to the nitty gritty of these hacks but I wanna start off with how you can clean your mats. Now, it is a little PSA that Cricut does not want you to clean your mats. In my personal opinion, that might be because they just want you to buy new mats, but those mats are not cheap, guys, so definitely try and get the life out of those that you can. So if your mat's not sticky and you feel like you need to clean it, you guys need to clean it with this stuff right here, okay? This is from the Hear me guys, Dollar Tree, okay? This is a dollar and then the refill is a dollar, okay? Look at this, so you get this for a dollar and this for a dollar. Two dollars here for years and years and years of mat cleaning success. So if you guys want to see the video exactly how to clean your mats on this, step-by-step, step, really easy tutorial, click the link down below. It will be in the description, okay? How to clean your Cricut cutting mats, you guys will love that. But this stuff is a lifesaver, okay? You spray it on, let it soak, scrape it down, rinse it, dry it, done, okay? It's a very easy process. Tanner breaks it down perfectly. So go check out that video if you want to see exactly how to clean your mats. But it's definitely a must, okay? You can't make a project with a mat that's not sticky. It's as simple as that. The next tip I have for you all is to keep all of your Cricut tools in one spot, okay? Now I know if you have a Maker or an Explore Air that they do have these little pockets for tools and things like that, so that's great, keep them in there. But I'm talking about all your extra tools, okay? If you need another weeding tool, if you need a scraper, a spatula, some scissors, things like that, keep them all in one spot. Keep them in their own little spot, their own little bin, their own little drawer, wherever you can keep them. You do not wanna be scrambling around your craft space looking for the Cricut tool that you misplaced somewhere because they're all scattered all around, okay? So if you know that all your Cricut tools are in one place, it, you will be one step closer to a successful project, okay? The next tip I have for you is a fun one, and this is a very good tip for all of you paper crafters out there, okay? So let's say you do not have a light grip mat, okay? You have a standard grip mat, and this even works for the light grip mat, so I get into the habit of doing this every time you make a paper project. but. For this example, let's say you don't have a light grip mat and you have to use a new standard grip mat. Well, if you're a paper crafter, I would be worried that my paper would curl really badly when I try to peel it up. But a beautiful way to stop that, guys, is to go with gravity, is what Tanner likes to say, and it's really easy to remember. So you're gonna place your uh, mat down, face down, and then you're gonna peel up like this. And as you can see, this is wanting to come off right off the mat. So if you peel like this, and you keep a good tight hand down there on your uh, glitter cardstock or your paper or whatever you seem to be cutting. You just peel this off, use the same motion, and then there you go. Okay, not curl at all. It's perfect, it's just the same, and your mat's fine as always. So that is a really, really great tip if you do not want any pages to curl or anything like that. Lay it, the mat face down and peel the mat up instead of peeling your material up. Okay guys, next up is using Crayola markers in your clamp A, okay? These make really, really great Cricut pens. You can hack the system, you can get these guys in there. They're so much cheaper, I think the colors are more vibrant, and to be honest, I would buy these over the Cricut pens because 
They are very expensive. They don't draw as thick as I would like them. So that is something that you can control with these Crayola markers. So the price difference alone is the reason that I would quit buying Cricut pens altogether. But it writes beautifully. You won't see any problems with it. It actually turns out beautiful every time I've used them. And if you guys would like to see a beautiful comparison video of Crayola markers versus Cricut pens in the maker writing the same thing head to head, the link for that video will be down, low, uh, down below in the description. Go look for that. That is down there. But those write beautifully. I've not had a single tr bit of trouble with these. So if you want to enjoy writing uh, a little more economically and not having to pay for those very expensive Cricut pens, definitely go for this option because you will not be disappointed. Our next tip for you is one that's kind of close to home for me because I have actually started my Cricut journey a few years ago using this tip. I have never not used this tip. The kind of days that I've had to uh, not use this tip, I have been miserable. But it is to weed on the mat, okay guys? You wouldn't think that it would be as amazing as it is, but I promise it is awesome, okay? So once you get that, um, get that cut file and you've cut it and you pull it out of your uh, machine, do not take it up off the mat, okay? Weed it on the mat, apply your transfer tape on the mat, burnish on the mat, peel up on the mat, Use your mat, guys. It's like two extra hands that's really keeping your project down. It ensures success. The very few times when I've had to really crank out projects and use the same mat, I've had to peel it up and weed it by myself without the help of the mat. Guys, it did not go nearly as well or as smooth. So just use the mat, guys. It's there to help you, okay? Something else that you've got to remember to do, guys, is reuse your transfer tape. I don't know how many times I can preach this in these videos. This stuff right here does not grow on trees, okay? It is not cheap, and you can reuse this up to seven times. I'm not talking about using it once, twice, done, okay? We wanted to test this one day, so me and Tanner were getting crafty here in the studio, and we actually used this as many times as we could on different projects, and we were able to get seven uses out of this. Now, of course, by like the fourth or fifth time, it was not as sticky, and we were having some trouble transferring it, but... As far as economical, you know, the economic factor goes, it's way better to reuse this transfer tape as much as you can, get the most bang for your buck because it's not cheap. And if it can be used, definitely reuse it, guys. So again, you can get up to seven uses out of this little guy. And next, guys, always make sure you make test cuts when using a new material. Whether you be using it in your Explore Air 2 or your Maker, if you're using a new material, any faux leather, any thick glitter cardstock, any felt, anything like that, be sure to use the directions for cutting that type of material and be 100% sure to make a test cut. If you buy one uh, sheet of felt because you only need one sheet of felt for the project you're making, buy two sheets, okay? Buy one sheet for a tester and one sheet for the actual project. You want to make sure you're going to get uh, the best cuts. You want to make sure you get the most success out of your projects. Making test cuts with new material is another way to ensure success and that you won't be wasting too much material. So all you really have to do is, you know, cut out a little circle, a little square out of whatever material you're using just to make sure the blade, the setting, the mat, everything that you have selected is correct for the new material that you are using. Okay guys, this might be the most anticipated hack explanation we have. In all of the live streams, all the videos that we have incorporated this little guy, I've always had you answer questions about it. So the actual hack is making sure you use alcohol on all of your slick, flat surfaces that you plan to put vinyl onto. This is your Cricut machine, mugs, notebooks, tumblers, anything smooth that you want to apply vinyl to. Always add your alcohol, just um, a little bit of alcohol, wipe it down to get all of the dirt and dust and oil from your fingers off of there and everything off so it's ready to adhere to that vinyl, okay? So vinyl loves to stick to plastic slick flat surfaces, okay? So help it out a little bit, wipe it down, get everything, all the debris, all the dust out of its way so it can adhere really, really well. But what you guys see in all of our videos that you guys love are these little pumps, okay? So the the, uh, the top opens up and it's like this little pump. So all you do is you get a little piece of paper towel and pump, pump, then boom. You have your alcohol on there and you just wipe off your project. So we fill it up with alcohol, then we pump it whenever we make a project. We have these little guys all around the studio. They're super helpful for us. So we got these from the Dollar Tree, okay? They were a dollar. 
It's gonna come in a bunch of different colors. I've got the dark blue one, the turquoise one, the pink one, the purple one. They have a green, they have a red, they have an orange. They have all different kinds of colors, guys. And fill your fill this with your alcohol, okay? 50%, 90%, 91%. Uh, however much alcohol you want, usually the higher the better. It dries a little bit quicker, so we usually like to use a 91%. Um, here we have a 50, I think, for you guys to show you guys today. Yep, 50. But fill this up, guys, and you just pump it and then go. It's so, so awesome. You're not having to open the lid and make sure you're not going to spill it out. Nope, I got too much on my, you know, paper towel. It's soaking down my project. It's just a couple pumps and you're good to go. Now, this is intended for nail polish remover and it makes total sense okay so you put nail polish remover in there you put your little cotton swab cotton pad a cotton ball in there and then you take off your nail polish well as crafters okay we got to stick together so this hack right here is a great one for anybody that makes a lot of vinyl projects um, especially those of you who run like an Etsy store or run a business with this efficiency is key when you're making projects and you're running a business making money with those so this is a very small way to get way more efficient in your crafting and we absolutely love those little uh, pump guys so we have two awesome hacks on how to keep your vinyl scraps your HTV scraps contained and out of your hair out of the floor out of everywhere and we just keep them organized so the first one that we have is painters tape so who doesn't have painters tape Wrap it around your fingers, okay? Wrap it all around your four fingers right here. Rip it off. You know it rips very easy as painter's tape. And then you have it right here on you, okay? Well, with your dominant hand, you're weeding, you're peeling up from the mat. Take your weeder tool just like this, okay? So you're weeding from the mat, take your weeding tool, and just stick your little vinyl scraps, your HTV scraps, onto that uh, tape. It will want to stick to that. And that way you can have it, you can hold it. You can even put it on this hand if you want to. As much as you want, wind it up your whole arm if you're um, weeding a really big project, however you want to do it. But it's a very simple way to keep um, your scraps contained when you're weeding a very small project. And the next tip for keeping your scraps contained is using a tissue box. This is from the dollar store. It was a dollar. Take the tissues out, put them in an actual tissue holder, put them in a little bin and tell your kids to use those first. You know, we got to get crafty here. So take out the tissues from a tissue box, and this is the perfect place to drop all of your scraps, okay, your little scrap pieces of HTV and vinyl. So weed it up, throw it in there, and keep them all contained. This is something really, really great to keep on your desk, keep on your craft table, keep close by for those projects, those bigger projects that you're weeding that maybe the uh, painter's tape just wouldn't do justice, or maybe you'd use too much of it to make it worth it. So these are super inexpensive. This is a great way to keep all of your scraps contained in one little spot. Okay, guys, next up, this hack is for our Explore Air users. Now, if you have your Explore and you're just learning it, or maybe you have a lot going on, or you just need a little refresher here, you need a little jump start, a little boost hack, well, this is it. Always keep your machine on the custom setting on your dial. That way, in design space, your machine will let you know to always choose a material. It's a great way to never try and cut iron on when it's accidentally on the cardstock setting. And things like that so if you keep it set to custom design space will always alert you to make sure that you select a material and that will remind you to select the correct material it's a great little hack especially for beginners they're just learning and navigating their machine another little hack that will save you money in the long run is getting you some aluminum foil now aluminum foil is good for sharpening your fine point blades because we all want to get the most life as we can as out of all these Cricut uh, tools because they are not cheap. So like you're going to clean your mats, we're going to try and sharpen your blades before you have to go and buy some extra. So there's two ways that you can use aluminum foil to um, sharpen your blades. You can roll it up and squish it into a very tight aluminum foil ball and uh, poke out your blade and then poke it into the aluminum foil. That is one way. Now another way is you can take a sheet of aluminum foil and apply it down onto your mat and have your machine cut out 100, 200 circles out of that sheet of aluminum foil, and that will also sharpen your blade. So it's however you wanna do it, but it's definitely worth a try if you are on the last leg of that blade and you really wanna try and get some more life out of it. This is a great hack that we use when we use any mugs or any Christmas ornaments with our vinyl. So you take your transfer tape, and uh, before you apply it to your, let's say, glass ornament, Number one, be sure you wipe it down with that alcohol, like we said. But number two, get you some scissors, okay? And after you've weeded it and applied your transfer tape to it, 
go along the edges of that design and cut along your transfer tape. If there are words, go in between the words there, get as high up to the design as you can without, of course, cutting the design. But as you cut around the um, transfer tape, it makes um, the design adhere a lot better to that rounded surface. And once you burnish it in there with your fingers and your tools, it's very easy to just peel off in little sections and then you have project success. Next up is one that I'm super excited about. We have already tested it in another video, so I will not test it here for you guys today. But I'm just gonna tell you about it because we already know it works. We try to preach this as much as we can. This is from the dollar store, okay? Baby powder and a little makeup brush, okay? So this little makeup brush I think was only 50 cents. And as you can see, you know, it's a very cheap little makeup brush and this is dollar baby powder. When you are using glitter iron on, if you do not have a bright pad and you do not have a very well lit room and you might have a little bit of issues trying to see where you should weed that glitter iron on because we know it is tricky. Take you a little bit of baby powder, sprinkle it on your project on the back of, you know, your iron on. Take this brush and brush it off. And what the baby powder does is it lays perfectly into the little cut lines and you can see exactly where you're supposed to weed. It's literally magical, guys. I absolutely adore this hack. Uh, we use it all the time when we are not in a well-lit area, when we are weeding our glitter uh, iron-on. It is great. It's a great hack, especially if you're using a very dark color like black. This white baby powder will pop really well in those little cut lines. But definitely try this next time. I know you've got these things laying around your house, okay? They do not have to be brand new out of the package, just try it, okay? And if anything, if you don't have a brush, sprinkle this on there, blow it, you know, just blow it around and then kind of dust it off uh, with a paper towel or anything you can and see if it works the same. But that is an amazing hack that we use all the time and I hope that you all enjoyed it as well. You guys need to be sure to reverse weed when you are cutting intricate little quotes or letters or designs or things like that. So after you cut it out, Make sure to reverse weed. It will save you so much time, so much energy, so much frustration, and so much hassle. Now, if you guys want to know how to reverse weed, I have a fun little quick, to the point, step-by-step, -step, very concise tutorial on that. I will link it in the description below for you guys. It's a great one if you wanna learn how to reverse weed for any types of projects. Um, you can use it for any type of project, but it's really, really great for little cursive uh, script fonts that you are using in a project or really small intricate letters, things like that, little wispy flowers that are pretty delicate. Anything delicate that had to be cut, you know, very precisely, very particularly is really, really good to reverse weed. And it's not hard at all, guys. It's very, very easy. It's great to get in the habit of it and start doing it once or twice a week so that when you do have a project that maybe uh, you run a business and you're going to, you know, make money with this project you really need to know how to do um, reverse weeding to the best of your ability so go ahead and practice that a couple times a week so that when you get hit with that uh, order that just is a little more intricate you know exactly how to reverse weed to get a successful project the next tip I have for you is to use masking tape to keep your material down on mats that just aren't sticky anymore now I hate throwing away mats that aren't sticky after I've cleaned them several times with the LA's totally awesome cleaner from the Dollar Tree and followed all the steps for the care sometimes it just doesn't end up the way I want it to sadly so grab you some masking tape this is scotch brand but you can buy some from the dollar store just put it on the edges if you're using cardstock vinyl um, whatever you may be using and help it stick down on the mat so that it can cut and you can get a successful project because those mats don't grow on trees, so this is a last ditch effort into trying to get more life out of those uh, mats. So use this um, at the very end of that mat's life for a couple more weeks before you toss it. Another great thing to get in the habit of doing is labeling your scraps, whether it be vinyl or HTV. Get a little Sharpie, put it next to your scrap bin if you have one, and make sure you write down what this is. So I know that this is um, iron-on, so I'm just gonna write iron-on. And this is standard everyday iron-on, so that's just all I'm gonna say is iron-on. Now if this was Sport Flex, if it was patterned, if it was um, any other type of iron-on, make sure you specify. You guys will be so surprised at how often I think I will remember what type of iron-on I'm using. Throw it in my bin, and a couple weeks or months later, I'm looking through it and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this Sport Flex? Is this regular everyday iron-on? How can I tell this looks crazy? And again, 
This is about efficiency. If you want a successful project, you really need to make sure that you're you know, using these small steps and using these small little tips and tricks to help you be the best crafter you can be. So labeling uh, all of your scraps, you know, wiping things down with alcohol, making test cuts with new materials, all of this will help you become a better crafter. And that's what we're here to do, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that little tip of being sure to label your vinyl scraps. And moving right along, guys, the next tip I have for you is to use gift cards as scraper tools, okay? Those scraper tools get dull, they get beat up a lot. Using a gift card is a great way to um, get more life out of those, give those a break, and they hold up really, really well. Now, we don't have any um, with us today to show you, but let's just say you got a card for your birthday to Dairy Queen, and you went and you got you your blizzard, and you got you some lunch, so now it's empty. Well, tell the cashier, tell the clerk at the you know desk to give you back that card. You can use it, it is an empty card, but you can use it for crafting, okay? So you can do that. And I know we all have maybe a stack of gift cards that we think are empty, but might not be empty. So we throw them in a drawer because there might be a couple cents or a couple bucks left on there. Grab one of those that ain't doing you no know, good in a jaw or in a drawer. So grab those and get to weeding, get to scraping with those, and those will help you a lot. One of the most well-known tips, but I feel like beginners really need to hear it, is to always keep this clear sheet that goes on your Cricut mats, okay? Keep this sheet, it will protect your mat at all costs. When you are not crafting, lay that sheet directly all over the mat. Keep it from getting dust, debris, dirt, anything on there so you can keep that and extend the life of that mat. And guys, here it is. Here's hack number 20, okay? This is one of the ones that we, me and Tanner use all the time constantly in our studio. It is a great hack to know in the back of your mind. Uh, especially if you're a beginner, you would you need to know this for the future, so it's a great one. When you're cutting, doesn't matter what machine you're using or what have you, after you put a new fresh blade in, I know that it cuts so good, it cuts like a dream. You love how your vinyl is so easy to weed. Well, after a couple weeks, that blade will become dull depending on how much you are crafting. Make sure that in your design space settings before you hit that flashing cricket button and cut out your vinyl, iron-on, cardstock, whatever, that you uh, use more pressure. So it's on standard pressure, there's less pressure, and then there's more pressure. Go over there to that little setting and select more pressure. It's like a little boost. It's like Cricut knew that you would be having a dull blade after so long, so it gave us this little uh, more pressure option to be able to give us just a little more pressure when cutting uh, iron-on and vinyl to get the same results as if the blade was uh, new, but after the blade is already dull. So it's like Cricut thought of everything. So we absolutely love that hack. What did you all think of these 20 Cricut hacks that will change your life today? I hope that you all enjoyed them. I absolutely love making videos like this and sharing with you guys all the tips and tricks because to be honest, in our craft studio, most of these just come second nature. They're just, we just crank it out. We just know these steps. But if you are a Cricut beginner or maybe you just haven't been told some of these hacks, these are news to you, and these are things that save our crafting lives all the time. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you have not already, check out the link down below to get a ton of crafty inspiration with your die cutting machine. This thing right here was a big investment for you. So definitely let us help you become the best crafter you can be to uh, get your return on your investment with your die cutting machine. You will absolutely love the exclusive membership of Makers Gonna Learn. That is the first link in the description below. But guys, let us know in the comments which one of these was your favorite hack, okay? I absolutely love all of them. It's so hard for me to choose. So you let us know down below which one was your favorite. If you haven't already, click subscribe and get notified, ding that little bell and get notified when we give you all more crafty inspiration just like this because you won't wanna miss it. Don't forget that to uh, give us a like, hit that thumbs up for us guys, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful crafty day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.